knowledge from those who have the experience that you're looking for. Seek knowledge from those people that sit in the situation that you'd like to sit in yourself. It's the fastest way to get there, is to be humble and ask for help. The biggest mistake I made in my life is not asking for help. I owned a golf course worth a ton of money, never asked one person for help. If I would have picked up the Yellow Pages, for those of you that don't know what that is, it's a book that used to have phone numbers in it. But if I picked up a Yellow Pages and looked at any golf course when I owned that golf course and said, hey, I got a golf course that's worth over $100 million, what should I do? To anybody that owned a golf course, they would have been happy to tell me that I probably should have sold it, not borrow against it in 2008. So you could be an MBA, a JD, a business wizard, a multimillionaire, but if you start investing in things that you don't know, and I'll tell you a simple way, you know, I, you wonder how on paper, right, I had a golf course, a ski mountain, 33 homes in San Diego. Well, how did, how did you lose all that money, you moron? Well, let me tell you, it's a matter of financial literacy. I didn't ask anyone for help, right? I didn't ask anyone in finance for help. I didn't ask anyone that owned a golf course for help, right? I had made money my whole life, so why would I need to ask anyone else besides myself? And so what happened in 2007 and 8 that most people don't understand is I had a ton of, of equity. Right? I let my ego get into my way with some lawsuits. I wanted to be right, so I spent my liquidity trying to prove that I was right. But meanwhile, I always thought I could borrow against all this equity I had. But who would have thought that the banks would crash? Who would have thought that just because you have millions of dollars in equity that the bank would someday say, oh, sorry, no, you don't qualify to, for, for a second on that. We're, we're too much at risk. Well. If I would have asked for help, if I would have gone to anyone that had lived through different bank crises, different financing, and, and I would have asked for help, I easily not only would have survived, but I would have thrived. I would have been able to liquidate. I would have been able not to over leverage myself. I would have figured out different ways. But instead, my own level of financial literacy within the context of what I was working in was remedial, wow. right? I'm basic problems. And it doesn't matter the amount. It doesn't. It could have been $10 or it could be $10 million or even $100 million. One little favor, one little favor asking someone for help. And I see it all the time with young people in college. Football players don't have the humility to ask for help. Ask your coaches for help, your teammates for help, your teachers for help. If somebody tells you they don't have 10 minutes for something, they're not living. Come on. I have a 520 rule. Every phone call of mine is five minutes, or a, a goal of five minutes. Someone asks me for 10, I'm going to hold him to 10. That I'll go over my five minutes to help somebody. I could change his life. I spent years trying to figure out how to write books and speak. But I know the reason my books are so good is because somebody helped me. And he took 15 minutes. And then what I did is took how he wrote his books and made it mine. And then also had relationships that accelerated what we were doing, right? Oh, let me introduce you to you know, my book publisher. Let me introduce you to the guy who prints books cheaper than anyone, Rose Printing, down in Florida. So I can afford to send free books and pay for shipping to help inspire people, Thank you. right? Einstein said you need, the first step is to take action. Well, the most formalized action of being able to attract is to ask. And really, it takes radical humility. And the funny thing is, the older you get, the easy, you know, I shouldn't say that. The older you get, I feel, it's either easier or way harder, depending on your experiential living, to ask and, and attract, to be radically humble. Where I find when you're young, um, it, that, that duality is really difficult because we're trying to prove things, right? And we think, God, you know, they're gonna, it's they're gonna diminish my capacity, diminish what I'm asking. Like, you know, I'm training Marvin to ask more. And I love, man, every day he's like, Dave, I want to work for the NBA team. Dave, can you introduce? And he just keeps asking me. And right now I'm working through and I don't say no. I'm like, yeah, of course, let's figure out the best way, most efficient, effective, statistically successful way to get what you want. And meanwhile, he's always asking me one crucial question beforehand. Anything I can do to be of service, right? Oh, I'll run down to the store and get you water, get you ice. What else can I do for you, Dave? But, you know, he has a dream, and I, how much is his dream accelerated because I have a lot more experience, situation, knowledge, and relationship capital with people that are involved in the NBA than he does. 
And you can do the same thing in your business, same thing in your business, anything that you want to do. It's, and most things that I teach are very simple. It's a matter of discipline, consistently every day, persistently without quit, enjoying the pursuit of your potential. We live in a universe of more than enough. You have more than enough of everything. But a lot of people think they don't have enough. You're looking for more. You have to focus on what you do have. So if you're fast, focus in on that. If you're strong, focus in on that. If you're a role player, focus in on that. But don't quit. Hit it every single day and be honest with yourself. Illuminate what you don't do well and ask for help. One of the things that I believe is you always need three mentors. People that sit in the situation that you want to be in. We need to find three people, no matter what our age is, no matter what, how old and experienced and successful we are, we need to find those three people. When I wrote my book, I didn't know anything about writing books. But I knew that Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill was my favorite book. When I was making money, I would read it and I felt like every time I read it, I made more money. Has anyone read Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill? I highly suggest it. So, Instead of being the old Dave, I'm going to write a bestseller by myself and be one of those people like some of my friends that are still writing their bestseller. I'm eight books in. I have a McGraw-Hill deal. And all I did was went to Napoleon Hill Foundation, tell them that Think and Grow Rich is my favorite book and can you help me write a book like that? Something that's inspirational, aspiration, and practical something that lives by the laws of the universe and the laws of Goya. And literally, with a little bit of help, they helped me write a best-selling book my first time. And they continually help. This is what happens in the universe. When we're afraid of something, when we're not radically humble, it's like looking over a ledge and we're focusing in on, oh, I don't want to fall, I don't want to fall. And invariably, you fall. Because when you focus in on what you don't want and you're not radically humble, you get what you don't want. So you fall off the cliff and sure enough, you grab onto a stick and you're hanging there. And then what do we do? We look up and say, is somebody up, up there that can help me? I'm a victim. Is somebody up there I can help you? And there it is, God or the universe, whatever you believe in, says right away, I'm here. I'm here to help you. Just let go. I'll catch you. And so what do we do invariably without radical humility? Hold on tighter, look back up and say, anybody else up there that can help me? And then we wonder why we keep falling off the ledge and, hang and feel like we're hanging on to a stick. You want to know the definition or example of radical humility? Somebody that has the ability to let go and know that they're going to be caught because they live in a world of more than enough. We just aren't smart enough to know what that is. We just have to trust it. And when you're radically humble, you're able to trust it. When I wanted to do a TV show, first I had to pick the right star, so I picked Don LaFrida. That made my TV show. <laughs> Gotta catch it, she, she's incredible. But I didn't know very much about TV shows, so I went to the producer of Undercover Boss, because I loved that show. And I w went to a director that did 20 different shows. And I asked for help. Ask for help. Live in a world of, of that radical humility which comes with being of service because when you're of service, it makes you feel good not only to give but to ask back for your 20. I didn't give my $20 away, I kept it. And you can do that in your own lives, your own businesses, your own family. Whether you play offense or defense, how many times do we let our ego get in our own way? We don't have the humility to ask for help, right? We're trying to either do too much or too little. Just do your job, be part of the team. It's a collective belief. People that are afraid to ask for help or aren't radically humble, I just encourage you to, to do one thing. Reverse the paradigm to yourself and think to yourself, number one, if somebody came to you and asked you for help with something you were capable of doing, it is. right? If you're capable, why don't you do it? Would, would, of course you would, so why would anyone else? And two, how would you feel, how do you feel when somebody asks you for help and you're capable of helping them? I can't think of a higher vibrating truth in the world than when you're able to help someone that needs you. It's pleasure. It's, it's pure truth. It vibrates the path, and yet you're now denying 
right? You're not giving the gift to other people by providing them that humility of asking for help and expending what they have, providing value. You're giving them a gift because every person you allow to provide value creates a void that the universe now fills for them what they, from somebody else. For example, let's just start for me, right? I could ask all f five of you guys, you know, you've taken the time to be here, how can I be of service, right? And so I ask you for the first question, maybe you next and Lawrence next, whatever way. But two, you know, can you guys help me? Can you uh, tell, your, tell uh, people to listen to my podcast, right? Download my podcast, mm -hmm. right? So I could ask you that. Now, from that, I could get five downloads. Could you also, do you know anyone else that would like to download my podcast or that could help me get people to download my podcast? Help me and, you know, find the biggest influence that you know to help me get more followers? Simple ask. Well, you all have asks in your life that are just as simple as that that can have a significant difference. But if you get in the habit of doing that in person, on the phone, via email, and social media, in one week, I'm making 28 asks. But it's only taking me literally minutes of time in a day. What if I made a habit and did it 10 times a day, in person, on the phone, via email, or social media? How many millions of people am I hitting in a week? Now, I'm teaching this stuff, and I still am fighting myself to make sure I do it every day. Right? Every which way. So what do I do to check that? I'll go into my emails all the time and look at my sent box and go, how many asks do I have? How many people am I asking, can I be of service? Can you help me with this? Or do you know anyone that can help me? Yes, sir. I sent you a DM. Yep. I need help. Yep. I've been trying to write this book and do more public speaking. I do it now, but whatever I need to do to get 10 minutes, 15 minutes of your time for me is traveling. I'll do it. I just need to carve out that time to pick your brain, share a little bit of my story, and get your help to get my career and my personal life to that next level? The answer is yes. Yes. Colleen in the corner will schedule that for you. Please listen to what he just said. That's how you ask for help. Wow. Right? I need 10 minutes of your time. Right? Show the respect that, you know, people ask me all the time, hey, can you invest in my company? And they write this long, long thing that doesn't belong on text or LinkedIn or anywhere, even email. And my response is always, send me a business plan. But yeah, I've got to see, there's a billion great ideas out there, but I want to see a plan on how to monetize it, how to make money from it. And that's what a business plan does. And I'm happy to help you. I got to tell, you know, I don't have a business plan. Here's a template. This is one of the best ones that I've seen. There's always a help. That's how you ask for help. And extraordinary, I had a girl come in here yesterday. She's changing schools and she needed help. You know, she needed help and she needed to qualify for a loan so she could be an in-state tuition student and her scholarships and her grants. She's a soccer player and she was transferring and I brought clarity and help to her, right? I said, look, you know what? I'll put up the thousands of dollars through our charity to qualify for you. So now not only does she have the extra money, but she qualifies for in-state tuition, which now allows her to do. And, oh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choke up thinking about it. But all of a sudden, you know, she just started crying, sure. right? And for me still, what a gift. She, like, she gave me a gift. She, she didn't come in here asking for it. You know, I have people all over the world text me, oh, you know, I know you're a philanthropist and humanitarian. I need $400. No, I'm not a bank. No, 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 I'm not a bank. But if, if you come to me and say, I need your help, let me see what I can do. How can I help yes. you?